welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Nallen, and what a treat to be with you today. You know, whatever is happening in your life to now, today, tonight, I want you to know that God is good. Period, exclamation mark, end of sentence. God is good. And you know, if we live in that zone, then we're expecting good, we're searching for good, we're knowing that he takes what the enemy means for bad and turns it to good. Uh, we're, we know that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Oh, by the way, that comes from Psalm 23. And guess what? We are going to get inundated and immersed in Psalm 23 today. My guest is Hannah Fett and she hails from Germany. She is a writer, she is a producer, and she's a minister. And one of the fun things about Hannah Fett is that we co-labored together in ministry for over a decade. We got to do all kinds of wonderful things for the Lord and with an awesome team. In fact, we worked behind the scenes in television. My husband was so excited when he heard Hannah was coming. He's like, we, we shared the same office for years, editing programs and creating quality Christian programming. Now she's on the other side of the camera and God is, she's been faithful with the little and God has made her ruler over much. Her latest work is a beautiful book called The Shepherd's Promises. And it's a beautiful book on praying Psalm 23. Now, you might ask, well, there's so much written on Psalm 23. Well, not like this. And we're gonna hear about the difference. You know, many times you have to go through the refiner's fire, an extraordinary life circumstance that makes you fall in love with a certain scripture. And when you dig in that scripture and you confess and you decree and you declare that scripture, then it becomes part of your DNA and who you are. Then you have an anointing to be able to communicate it in book form, in music form, and in preaching form, in teaching form. And that's what we're gonna hear from her heart today. And so before we go to the living room and we hear more about this beautiful uh, book, which I know you're gonna want these not only for yourself, but for others, let's go to Ruth McKinney, our beautiful friend from Pennsylvania. She's going to show us how to make a charcuterie board. We're gonna do something that is super fun and super easy to throw together before you have company come in because most of the stuff keep in your fridge because it lasts so long and then you can just throw it out on a board. That way, depending on the number of people you have coming to your house, you can throw together something that's suitable for that number. It's important to choose a hard cheese, a soft cheese, and a stinky cheese. So gather the cheeses that you like and then all sorts of different kinds of crackers. Don't just choose a water cracker or Ritz. Like literally go and choose some really fun things. Choose some tall things so you can add height. And then some fruit. Grab grapes. There's black grapes. There's red grapes. Do a variety of colors if you can. And then meat. Okay, if you're going to do a true charcuterie board, grab really fun Italian meats and don't roll them up. I'm not saying that you can't roll them up, but I just think it looks a little cooler that they look kind of messy. And so you kind of shake them out and just drop them. I have some meats back here. Shake out, drop. Go to a fun store that has different olives. Often they'll even have an olive bar. Some will be stuffed with feta, some will be stuffed with goat, some will have a garlic clove in them. But get some olives and then get some nuts. Um, and literally feel little ramekins, little bowls. Take for instance, often I'll even use these bowls. They're just kind of fun. And they are different sizes. You want different sizes. Then you want different honeys and jams. I use a fig preserve, which is really good on goat cheese. You can use a goat cheese log and drizzle fig jam all over that. You can also use a honeycomb. Let me show you how this is done. Here is a real honeycomb. I mean, it's super cool because you're gonna put the honey on some cheeses, but it's really fun to have an actual honeycomb to do that with. And then go outside if you have an herb garden or if you just have some flowers outside. I went and grabbed some different herbs. I grabbed catmint, which has a little bit of purple. I grabbed some yarrow. Um, I grabbed thyme and sage 
and I grab mint and it just gives everything a little extra color. The final thing I will tell you when you do a board, don't make it symmetrical, make it look messy and full. You want it to look like there's gonna be food left over when people leave. You don't want it to be your crackers are lined up, your meats lined up, your cheeses. You want it to look like you're sitting down to have a feast. And if you live on the mainline area outside of Philadelphia and you don't have the time to do this, or you frankly just don't even like it, um, my friend Christine at the Cornerstone does an incredible job of cheese boards. If you still have questions on what you might like as opposed to what I necessarily put on the board, in my book, I have a whole section on different cheeses you might like, meats, nuts, even sweet things to put on a board. Ruth McKinney is absolutely adorable. And you know, charcuterie trays are kind of a new phenomena in the last you know, three to five years, but I always say that it, it's our generation and our children's generation that they got used to Lunchables. Remember Lunchables that you would send and they'd peel them back? That's why the adults of that generation want a charcuterie board. So that is a proper charcuterie board brought to you by Ruth McKinney. Well, as I told you before, we have such a special guest today. I call her friend. Her name is Hannah Fett, and she got off a plane all the way from Germany just to be with you on Come Home. Hannah, thank you so much. Thank you for the honor and privilege to be here. Thank you. Well, I did not know until a few months ago that you had been working on this masterpiece, and I really, I love Psalm 23, and I, and I was so excited that you wrote the book, uh, The Shepherd's Promises. And you know you can get this book on uh, Amazon or you can go to PrayPsalm23.com. This is a great children's book, teen's book, uh, baby shower book, wedding gift, birthday gift. It's, it's beautiful, it's simple, it's profound, and it's filled with the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. So I, I love that. But, you know, uh, Chuck Pierce is someone I respect greatly, and he actually called this year, uh, 2023 or 5783 on the Hebrew calendar, he called this the year of Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. So you were very prophetic in mm -hmm. getting this book and this masterpiece birthed mm -hmm. prior to mm -hmm. this, this Hebrew year and this um, Gregorian calendar year. So Hannah, why do you think God inspired you to write this book? I was just reading Psalm 23 and I thought, because it's such a well-known Psalm and we heard millions of sermons about it, I thought, I don't want us to skip over the word because God's, because God's word is precious. It has so much to give to us. Yeah. And so I thought, I need to meditate on it. I need to dissect it. I need to allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me about it. And, you know, even David, he writes in his first psalm about meditating day and night. Yeah. And so I thought even the first line, the Lord is my shepherd. What if I really believed he was my shepherd? Right. What if I really thought about the characteristics of a shepherd? And it just blew my mind. And when I was meditating on each verse, all these scriptures came to my mind. And they supported the characteristics that is revealed in, in the verses. And I was very excited. And then hearing on Dateline, I was watching Dateline one day and I heard Chuck Pierce say, this is the year Psalm 23 will become a reality. So God really wants to reveal himself yeah. this year as a shepherd. This is a season for us to experience God as shepherd. Yeah. Well, you know what's fascinating is sometimes we just consider Psalm 23 like the funeral psalm, which that's not fair because it is so rich and you have done a phenomenal job in outlining the richness. In fact, I love the appendix because mm. in the appendix, you take each characteristic of the shepherd and each promise from Psalm 23 and then you give you give um, supporting scripture yeah. and that's great. So you can take this and make this like a whole journal, Bible study, going yes. through the word, highlighting. Yes. But you know, um, out of every animal uh, in the word, he called us sheep, yeah. you know, he, and, and there's just thousands and thousands of animals documented and he calls us sheep. 
And sheep are the only animals that need a shepherd or they can't survive. And so how wonderful that you did a study and you just referenced getting to know him as our shepherd. Mm. Because, you know, in America, in a Western mindset, we don't see a lot of shepherds. But I know overseas, you know, sometimes traffic stops, your car gets stuck because of shepherds and sheep and herding. And, mm. and so it's much more common outside of America to understand that shepherd-sheep relationship. Mm. Yeah, can, you can also think about it as, you know, a lot of people have dogs or yeah. cats. Yeah. You know, how, does you, how do you care for a dog or a cat? Yeah. So you can use the imagery of a shepherd uh, to understand who God is. Yeah. And that is really exciting. Um, something uh, that um, before we get into the picture of the shepherd and talk more about the shepherd, um, I wanted to point out that there's music in the book because yes. the music is just uh, that what makes the book unique, too. But yeah. it um, is just wonderful, calming piano music by Mark Payne, yes. a beautiful, wonderful worship leader, pianist. Why is music so important? Um, because before I pray, before I uh, meditate on the Word of God, I usually put on music. Yeah. And music just helps me to calm down. Yeah. It helps me to shift from my own thoughts yes. to Jesus. Yes. And I know music has always been a tool to uh, influence our emotions. Yeah. You know, even the, the Greek philosopher Plato said, uh, music is like medicine for yes. the soul. Yes. And so, you know, when we, before we pray, we go through the day or we just get up and, and start our day and we have our minds and our thoughts set on what is coming and the challenges. But when we play music, calm music, it sets the mood. Yeah, it sets an atmosphere, it sets the environment. Yes. And, and like you said, it gets us locked into our spirit man. It kind of takes us out of the natural man and the That's solical right. man and gets yes. us there. And that was one of the things I had down to bring up yeah. is how is it, you know, when I'm, you're thinking, how is this book different from every other book on Psalm 23? And look, let me show you, look at the QR codes. All you do is just take your smartphone and you hover it. And then all of a sudden it, there's a, there's free music. So while you're using this or while you're in the car or in the shower, you get to have that. And Dr. Mark Payne is such an anointed pianist. Yes. We served with him. Yes. He's no stranger to CTN. Uh, they, he's on many uh, programs here locally and nationally. And uh, he, he's gifted. And yes. so you picked a good one. Yes. You did. Good yes. job. <laughs> yes. Because I know he can bring the anointing. Yes. You know, it says that uh, God inhabits the praises yes. of his people. And when we worship it says in Deuteronomy, he, God chooses to reveal his name yeah. in worship. You know, the people brought the sacrifice, which is a form of worship, yeah. into the tabernacle, into the temple. And it says God chooses to reveal his name. Yeah. He chooses to encounter us and we can discover who he is. And so before I pray, when I worship before I pray, I'm already in the presence of God. Yeah. I'm already in the throne room. Yeah. And my mind is already set to encounter a God that can invade the impossible, yes. that can do the impossible. So it does influence the way I pray. Yeah. That's why I love to worship before I start praying. Yes. Well, that, that is a huge factor in worship because, you, you know, James 4, 7 and 8, draw close to God and then he will draw close to you. Then you resist the devil and then he flees. But it all presupposes that we've made a decision to draw close to him, to come near. And then so we get to activate the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so much of that is done through worship. And, yes. and, and then he does come, like you said, yes. and he inhabits yes. the praises of yes. his people. Yes. Okay, so another thing you're huge on is in this, this masterpiece is praying Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And I love the resources on, on the website, the, the PrayPsalm23.com. That's so nifty and trendy, mm -hmm. and you can remember it. And so I encourage you guys go on that website, and there's free resources on there and prayers and declarations along with, you know, the ability to order this book and accompanying CD. So 
um, share with us some of the things in your life that you've seen transformed by praying Psalm 23. Well, I love the Word yeah. because the Word is powerful yeah. and the Word brings change. I don't want to just read over some scriptures. I don't want to just pray. I want to see results. Yes. I'm a no-nonsense yes. person. I want to see results. And uh, when, I, when we pray the Word, we will see results because that is what God has promised us. It says in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it says, this is the confidence that we have, yeah. that when we pray anything, we yeah. ask God anything according to his will, he hears us. Yes. And if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked for. So we can ask anything and God will give it to us. We will see results. That's like a blank check. Yeah. You know, I can write a little in there. I can write much in there. I can ask little. I can ask much. Right. If it's according to the will of God, I will have it. Right. And what is the will of God? How do I know? I go back to the word. Yeah. And the word, I have my thoughts recalibrate my thoughts, right. my belief system. Right. You see, I used to think, oh, God is blessing everybody else but me. Right. And wrong thinking. Right. Because the word says, God is not a respecter of persons. That's right. No good thing will he withhold from those who love him, who, who walk uprighteously. Yeah. So I can expect his blessing. So I, the word recalibrates the way I think. Right. It adjusts, it corrects yeah. my thinking. And it also sets the stage for the supernatural. Right. For the you know, miraculous. His kingdom come on yeah. earth as it is in heaven. Right. For the miraculous, exactly. So when I am aware of all that, I pray totally differently. Yeah. I, my prayers become an expression of faith yes. and not of unbelief. That's awesome. Yeah. And That's so awesome. I'm already, while I'm praying, I'm excited because I know God is doing something. Yeah. He will answer. And of course, we know uh, God isn't, is not uh, like a slot machine where you put something yes. in and what we want comes out. But we can trust yes. that whatever, however he answers the prayer, it will be based on his goodness yes. and his wisdom. Yeah. So we can trust him. You know, my husband and I... And uh, you guys had such a fun working relationship and yes. we're in the trenches yes. <laughs> uh, for many things. And but God used both of you, you know, to create um, something that was such a powerful force to be reckoned with in media, in Christian media. But he we we've pastored as associates and then lead pastors for 32 years. And something, one of the number one questions that people would ask us as pastors is, what's the will of God for my life? Mm. And he would always go back to um, the word of God mm. is the will of God. Mm. And the will of God is the word of God. Amen. And that's what you're saying, yeah. that anything that he wills is in his word. Right. But we also have this voice activated kingdom. You right. know, you see that starting yeah. back in Genesis yeah. that God, you know, saw yeah. it. He said it and it was good. You know, he mm -hmm. saw it, he said it, and yeah. it was good. And so we have to say things and not all uh, denominations um, or faith camps teach the importance of declaring right. and speaking the word. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I love that in this book, you are all about, you know, coming in agreement with the word and speaking it mm -hmm. and declaring mm -hmm. it. And what is so wonderful about, especially Psalm 23, it uses imagery. Yes. I'll, I'm a visual person. Yeah. I love pictures. Yeah. Uh, and God speaks to me uh, through pictures. Because we all know times are not always wonderful. Yeah. We all encounter challenges, difficulties. Yeah. And I love this picture that God prepares a table yeah. in the sight of our enemies. Yes. You know, what is a table? A table is a place of fellowship, intimacy, a, a communication, communion, yes. communication. It's just fellowship with the Lord. And food. When, food as well. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun, enjoying yes. life, you know. Yes. And sometimes we get so focused on looking on the challenges around us and yes. thinking, oh, I'm caved in. I don't know what to do. But we need to shift and see that beautiful Table. table. That is laid out by Jesus, yes. you know, in the midst 
of all the challenges. Doesn't yes. mean they're not there, right. but the attacks that come in life, they don't matter. Right. Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper, right. you know. Right. Well, you know, what's interesting is, and there's many watching, you may be going under persecution, yes. you yes. might have enemies, you might have challenges, people might be lying on you, gossiping, misunderstanding you. But here's the thing, God is going to prepare a table. Yes. You have that promise. Yes. It's in this book, it's in the book, God's mm -hmm. book, the B-I-B-L-E. But my husband says, you know, no enemy, no table. You want a table, you're going to have an enemy. Right. Uh, and so that, it, that once again helps you understand that if we trust God in the, in the fire, yeah. in the flood, yeah. in the storm, in the persecution, yeah. in the misunderstanding, that he will come through for us. Yes, he will. He will. Yeah. And it's the beautiful picture of the walking through the valley. Yes. Of the shadow of death, you know. Walking through. Walking through Not it. camping out. <laughs> not camping out. That's not the final destination. Yeah. You know, the problems that somebody might have, it's not the final destination. We walk through it. And, and the beautiful thing is that Jesus is right walking with us. You yeah. know, where there's shadow, it has to be light. Yeah. You know, light is there. Jesus is there to, to walk us through, to guide us. It says his rod and stuff, they comfort us. Yes. And he guides us. And I've been thinking, you know, we all mess up sometimes. You know, we all do things that are not good. And, you know, the picture of this one sheep that gets stuck somewhere <laughs> uh, off track. And somebody might think, you know, I'm gone, I've gone too far away. Somebody might think, oh, I've messed up. Jesus is not going to love me, but he no, we know the, the scripture, he leaves the 99, 99. to go after the one. Yeah. And that is so comforting. Is. You know, he goes and not to punish, not to say, oh, you've done wrong, that's it. But to take up the yeah. little lamb, yeah. you know, and I love the imagery because, you know, he t just picture Jesus taking you in his arms yeah. and where's the head of the lamb? Against the his bosom, heart. The heart, yeah. So he makes sure you hear his heartbeat. You yeah. know that you are loved, yeah. you know. And he walks you back to a place of yeah. safety, to the green pastures. Right. And sometimes he puts you on, puts a lamb on the shoulder to carry, you know, yeah. if you have to walk a long way. Yeah. And again, where's the head of the lamb? Right on the heart. It's right where he, Jesus talks, yeah. where you can hear. Yeah. Where he can guide you and confirm and aff affirm you. Yeah. And where you can learn to hear mm -hmm. his voice again. Yeah. You know, sometimes we, th we don't hear the voice of God. No, we're but human. He, In our humanity, human. we yeah. miss it. But he does speak. And so he holds us close because yeah. he promised, my sheep shall hear my voice. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, you, you referenced the lost sheep, you know, in the book of Luke. In one chapter, uh, Jesus is, you know, telling parables, he's telling stories, he's identifying with the heart of man, and he talks about the lost coin, the lost sheep, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. lost son, all in one chapter. Yeah. And so, you know, if you feel lost, listen, God, he's coming to find you. Yes. There's a great little story you can Google yes. about a, a sheep named Shrek that mm -hmm. got lost. This really happened. And by the time they found him, <clears throat> he had 600 pounds of wool Mm -hmm. and he should have been dead, mm -hmm. but somehow God spared him, and this man found him, and they sheared him, mm -hmm. and then he, it was like it gave him a new life, mm -hmm. but he had been, you know, all that heaviness, the heaviness of the world. Mm -hmm. um, before we close, Hannah, because mm -hmm. I, I hate, um, I just, your love for Jesus is just oozing out, and I know it oozes out through the pages here. I want you to minister, but before you do, I want um, just for people to see the vi the illustrations, the visual, the pictures, the illustrator in this book is, was that you? Yeah. <gasps> <gasps> Some people have all the gifts. <laughs> Hannah, I didn't even I, know. I took photos and uh, worked them in Photoshop. <laughs> okay, they're beautiful. The imagery is beautiful. And I, I love visuals too. And you did such a wonderful job. I know you partnered with the, the Trinity on it. But um, before we end the show today, I want to just give you the freedom. Uh, you are a spirit-filled woman of God and just minister. There's people watching. They're leaning in. They want comfort. And I just want to give you the freedom to, to share your heart with them. Yeah. Well, I want to talk to the one that feels down, that feels life is passing by. And I want to say to you, God has not forgotten you. Whatever you go through and whatever you face right now, 
It is not your end. It's not the end of your life. It's not the end of your story. Things will change. Just picture that table that is before you. And Jesus is inviting you to drink from his fountain of life. He's inviting you to eat. He's inviting you, if you lack love, he wants to love on you. If you lack, lack, if you lack peace, he wants to give you peace beyond understanding. He loves you so much. You, are pur you have purpose, you have destiny, and he is right there with you to walk you through difficulties. So let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for this person watching right now. I know you are a God who sees who sees the one in the corner, who you see the one on stage. You see what their heart goes through, what, what, they, what, their heart, what they are moved by. You see the difficulties, you see the challenges, Lord. And I thank you that you are a God that is the solution. You are a God that is a good God. You are the good shepherd, Lord. And right now I pray the peace of God on this person. I pray the peace of God that passes all understanding, Lord, and give them a new revelation of you being a shepherd who guides, who provides, who gently picks them up, who gently leads, who speaks gentle words, not, of, not to condemn, but to encourage. And so thank you, Lord God, that you are a God of promise who is faithful to keep your promises. And thank you that we can rely on you and on your word because you will never fail us. You will always be there for us. You will always keep your promises. And you said you would never leave nor forsake us. And thank you for your wonderful, unconditional love, Lord. And we ask that right now you go into every home, into every person's heart and affirm and fill them mm. with your beautiful, wonderful, compassionate love that you have for each one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That was awesome. God and for, for those of you that uh, prayed and you've been part of this program, you can sense uh, the richness of Hannah's relationship with Jesus just through, I wish you could be where I am right now and feel the presence of God on the set, but I also know the anointing is tangible and it's transferable. So I pray the same peace that we feel, you're feeling right where you are. Hannah, thank you for thank coming you. all the way from Germany to thank be with you. us. Go to her website, praypsalm23.com. Order this book for yourself and for others. Thank you for watching CTN, for supporting this ministry. Thank you for watching Come Home and sharing it on social media and with your friends. Thank you for praying for us, partnering with us, sowing a seed. We so appreciate you. We'll continue to bring you God's heart through guests like Hannah Fett.